Good morning. Welcome to St. Gregory the Great. We are pleased to share this celebration with you. My name is Isabella Glamuzina. Our celebrant will be Father Dan, assisted by Deacon Greg. An open house is being held this Sunday from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at St. Gregory the Great School for new and prospective families. Please see the bulletin for details. Important events this week at St. Greg's include the meat raffle in our ministry center and much more. Please take and read the bulletin and discover all the life-giving ways God is working and waiting for you at St. Greg's. Today is the start of National Catholic Schools Week. The theme for this year's Catholic Schools Week is Catholic School, Faith, Excellent Service. Catholic Schools Week celebrates the contribution that Catholic education provides to children and youth, to our church, to our communities, and to our nation. The first Catholic school that opened in the United States is called St. Mary's School in Philadelphia in 1783. St. Gregory the Great School opened in 1960. Since 1974, National Catholic Schools Week has celebrated the education provided by Catholic schools in the United States. Catholic schools prepare students to be faithful disciples of Christ. Catholic education addresses the development of the whole person, spirit, mind, and body, through spiritual and academic formation based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. On behalf of Father Leon and Father Joe, I'd like to welcome you to our celebration of Catholic Schools Week. This Mass marks our opening of our celebration of our Catholic school. In today's Mass, we're going to, we obviously have our school students here, but we also are going to pray about what it means to have a Catholic school as part of our parish, and how that really empowers us and helps us to grow in our faith. 
And my brothers and sisters, as we begin this Eucharistic celebration, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong, and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing, those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the perks that I have as being a school moderator is that I get to spend a lot of time with the kids. And one of my favorite things that I get to do is celebrate school mass. And when I'm at school mass, I like to ask the kids questions to get them engaged just, and kind of to see like where they are at their faith. So a couple weeks ago, the gospel passage was all about having a hardness of heart. So I asked, the, I asked our students, you know, what should you do to prevent having a hard heart? What do you think Jesus would want you to do? And I got all of these responses from, um, you should be nice to others, you should pray, you should go to church, you should love one another. And you would expect this from like an eighth grade student who should be getting this. But there was kids as young as like first grade who were answering with these questions. And for me, it was such a moment of realizing the good work that we're able to do here at St. Greg's. Because we see that already from this young age, they're starting to put in that heart and mind of Christ. And our mission at the school is to create disciples of Christ. Yes, we're educating them in math and science and technology and literary skills, but we're also educating them in the faith. And when you can see the, world, the worldview through be the Catholic faith, we see how this really changes our entire being. It changes how we operate, what we do on a daily basis, and it changes how we live our lives. And this is what the, those students did for me at that homily in today's, in today's second reading. Because we see about how St. Paul is telling us that God is going to send the foolish of the world to, to fool the wise. It's through these little ones that they can inspire me to grow in my faith because of how faithful they are. And we really see in today's gospel passage about how our students are already putting in their minds and hearts about how to live out the Ten Commandments or excuse me, how to live out the Beatitudes. That was a little Freudian slip there because <laughs> the Beatitudes are, are symbolized in Moses going up the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. So it's important to note what Jesus does in the beginning. The Gospel says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. So just like Moses ascended Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, so too, Jesus ascends the mountain in order to give us the Beatitudes. But there's one important difference. Moses went up the Mount Sinai by himself. Jesus brings his disciples with him. And then, of course, this upward motion, too, is how we're ascending. We're going up into God's divine law. And this is how we are called to live this discipleship. And then Jesus sits down, which is a sign of rabbinic authority. So he's making these authoritative statements that his disciples are blessed when they're poor in spirit, they're mourned, they're meek, they hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they're merciful, they're clean of heart, and they're peacemakers. All of these things are what it means to be disciples of Christ. Now, of course, all of us are called to follow the gospel message in the fully, so let us go through these to think about what each and every one of them are. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor in spirit doesn't necessarily mean a poverty, like not being wealthy. But what it means is that we, we stand in awe of God and we realize that everything we have is a gift from God. And we stand in that awe of God's power. I see this in our students when they come to our Morning Star Adoration program. They look on the monstrance and they just are in awe of God being there and the solemnity of what it means to be in adoration. And they see about how they, they're just profound by the beauty of God. Blessed are they who mourn. Because we're mourning for our sins. We're mourning that we are not perfect as our Father in Heaven calls us to be perfect. And of course, our students go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation twice a year so that they can be cleansed of their sins. Blessed are the meek. This doesn't mean a doormat, but what this means is that we have that humility of heart. We're called to put others before ourselves. We're called to think of other people. So when I see our students helping one another in the hallway, when they pick up a piece of trash, when they help another student who's have, struggling with a math problem, all of these things are being that meekness of heart. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We're all called to be zealous for the just things of God. We're all called to go after these things of faith. And when I hear our students talking about their faith in their daily lives, that's how we see that they're zealous for the things of God. Blessed are the merciful. I know that sometimes our students talk back to their parents, so probably you're going to push back with me on this one. <laughs> but we really strive to have this model of forgiveness. Whenever a student gets in trouble, we have a restorative justice model. So we have this reconciliation that goes on between the students. Instead of just you know, punishing them, they're called to foster that forgiveness and that reconciliation. Blessed are the clean of heart. The kids are the most pure sponges. They just absorb everything, that, the love of God and the faith, and you see how they want to give that to others and they're open to that. That is having that childlike, pure like heart that we see so much in our students. Blessed are the peacemakers. And this doesn't necessarily, it can mean fostering peace in our world, but it's also giving that peace of Christ. So when we see our students giving the sign of peace at school mass, they're saying that shalom, that peace be with you. What they're doing is they're giving that blessing of God and they're sharing that peace of Christ. And of course, blessed are the persecuted probably applies more to the parents than to anybody else. Because we know what a sacrifice it is to make a Catholic education, to go through and to live that faith in our society. But we know that our reward will be great in the kingdom of heaven. Because all of these beatitudes direct us not towards being successful in this life, but they direct us towards being successful in the life to come. And this is where our students see that. They see that maybe they're not going to get what they want right here and right now, but they know that Jesus loves them. They know that God is a merciful God, and they know that this is what's called to be the center of their lives, that they're called to act as disciples of Christ in the service of the gospel. In today's first reading from Zephaniah, he talks about this remnant. And we see how there's this beautiful connection between that and today's gospel. Because this remnant people are the humble of the earth who observed God's law and seek justice and humility and will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's wrath, meaning the second coming of the Lord. And this is where at St. Gregory the Great School, we have this microcosm of our society. We have these disciples of Christ that come together who love the Lord, who share in the faith and get to talk about the faith each and every day in their classroom. This is the joy that we have that we're able to have here. But I hope you know that this isn't just something that we do in our school, but this is something that impacts our parish. One of the things that I've noticed this year is that how the teachers react to the students as well. I get to see them grow in their faith. And sometimes the students will bring these things home and, and bring them home to their parents and say, look at what I learned in the classroom, or maybe this is how they act. And it's, as we know, that school gives us that mission of what it means to evangelize. Because each and every one of us is not called to hold our faith to ourselves just to keep it for us. But we're called to go out and make disciples of all nations. We're called to proclaim our love for Jesus. We're called to proclaim all of these beatitudes and exemplify them in the world so that we're not just doing these things right here on this campus, but we're taking this and living our lives. And this is where each and every one of us, whether we're in school, whether we're a parent, whether we're a parishioner here at St. Greg's, we're called to be part of that remnant, those people that go out 
who profess the, the Beatitudes, who seek poverty in spirit, who mourn, who are meek, who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, are satisfied, show mercy, are clean of heart, and are peacemakers, even in the midst of persecution. Because we know that it's not what happens in this world that matters, but it's what happens in the world and the next. So today as we gather today to celebrate the opening of Catholic Schools Week, I'm grateful for all of those who give these virtues to our students. I'm grateful for our principal and assistant principal, for all those who work in our office. I'm grateful for each and every one of our teachers who work diligently to foster this faith. And I hope that each and every one of us pray for our Catholic school and pray that we can follow those examples of our students to live out these beatitudes in our daily lives and to truly form our lives after the gospel message so that each and every one of us may become a true disciple of Christ. Let us together profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that our merciful Father hears our prayers and petitions and offers us many blessings, we offer our prayers and petitions to our Father in heaven. For the church, may it stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders of the world, May they bring healing of all hatred and, and division to all nations and an end to terrorism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic educators, especially during this Catholic Schools Week, may they form our children according to the light and truth found in the teachings of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families and friends who lost loved ones during this past week due to gun violence, may our compassionate Lord bring them peace and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are affected by natural disasters, that through the compassion of Christians everywhere, they find comfort and assistance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may we continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Olga M. Nafarowski. Teresa S. Gunrock, Michael Poitras, Brendan J. Crumlish, Yvonne Lavaki, Rosa Vaccaro, Art Shalen, and especially for Doris McCormick, 
for whom this Mass is being offered. You pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers and concerns, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for your manifold gifts and ask you to hear these prayers that we offer you, those that we offer out loud and, and this, in the silence of our hearts. We ask you to hear and answer them in accordance with your most holy will. And we ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our ushers will now take up collection. Our combined collection today is for Catholic Relief Services. Um, for the 9.30 Mass on January 29th, 2023, the gift bearers are Luke Rusk, Gianna Weber, John Dolce, and Connor Platten. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O Lord, we bring you to, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holding of venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holding of venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we despair and resolve, we proclaim it with the Lord until you come again. 
for, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask, O mighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord your, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray in all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servant, to those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other that same sign of Christ's peace. With you. Peace with you. You see, Finn? Peace with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through the, this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to ask you to please be seated for a moment. And I would like to invite all of those who are involved in our school, so our faculty, our administrators, our parish staff that works closely with the school, to please stand. Um, you really are the heart and souls of St. Greg's School, and I'd like to take a moment to recognize you for all you do. I know that some of you have to leave to get ready for open house. You're welcome to do that. And while they're departing, I'm going to invite our principal, Mr. Luckett, to come forward to share some words about the school with us. I also will take this moment to say that Mr. Luckett is a phenomenal administrator. We are very blessed to have him at our school. Um, there's many times that we have late night texts about things at the school, but he really just puts on the heart and mind of Christ and brings that to our school students. So thank you for your service. Thank you, Father Dan. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Father Dan, a little heads up next time. Please, thank you for saying that. Um, good morning. Good morning. For those that I have not had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Ted Luckett. I have the privilege of serving in my first year as the principal here at St. Gregory the Great. My wife, Sarah, and our four children are proud to call St. Gregory the Great home and our daughter is a fifth grade student here at St. Greg's. Today I'm honored by Father Dan to be able to speak with you all as we kick off our open house, open enrollment, and Catholic Schools Week. Our school here at St. Greg the Great has a strong history connected with our parish beginning in 1960. That year we started with 386 students. Today we stand 63 years later with 388 students. However, today the picture of Catholic education is much different. In 1960, at the height of Catholic education, Western New York, our diocese stood strong with almost 200 elementary schools. Today, our diocese humbly stands strong with 30 elementary schools. In 1960, 80,000 students proudly attended Catholic schools in our diocese. Today, 8,000 remain. It is easy to look at these numbers in fear and despair of what becomes of our church, our school, and our faith. Or we can look at those numbers as an opportunity, an opportunity to rebuild anew on a much stronger foundation. To our parishioners, I wish to say thank you. None of this would be possible without you. 63 years strong, that has been largely possible because of your prayers and your financial support. Our students are extensions of your dedication to our parish and our faith. And our students appreciate you as you leave today, please take a card if you have not already received one. Our students took time to write you a card and say thank you. To our prospective families, 10,000 10, hours approximately of your children's lives will be spent in a school environment before they enter high school. Roughly 600,000 minutes will be spent in schools before your children are 14 years old. You are entrusting your child's safety, your child's spiritual and academic direction, much of who they will become, to adults other than yourself. This can be very difficult, especially as, at we, as we look at some of the great concerns and evils our children face in society today. We as a school are very much subject to all these concerns. As is any school, we are not perfect. However, what sets us apart is that we are built on the foundation of the one who was, who is, and who will always be perfect. And we are working day every, every day to join closer to his will. As Christ, Christ is quoted in Matthew saying, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell. 
and its collapse was great. I could easily try to sell our school to you and to tell you about what sets us apart. I could tell you about our excellent commitment to academics with scholarship winners and 100% acceptance rates to high school, including this year's winner of the Tim Russert Writing Scholarship for the entire diocese. I could tell you about our small class sizes, our growing number of clubs and activities, our excellence in athletics, including multiple championships in swimming, hockey, baseball, bas basketball, volleyball, a commitment to stream in the form of this year's first place finish in our robotics club, a top 10 scores in New York State Science Olympiad competition, commitment to special education with a special education coordinator on staff, special education teachers, two response to intervention teachers on staff, a new gross motor skills room, a growing partnership with Williamsville School District Special Education Department and Opportunities Collaborative, two counselors on staff focused on students' social, emotional, and academic growth, and this year our beloved therapy dog, Louie. And we have also added a 16-year veteran of behavior management and therapeutic intervention through Cornell University, our new Dean of Students, Mr. Dreschel. Our school is incredible. What we have is incredible. Our staff, they are incredible and dedicated in making a sacrifice day in and day out to be here, fully committed to our faith, our school, and your children. But what truly sets us apart is our foundation. Our school is committed as ever to building our faith as our foundation to prepare our students to be knowledgeable and prepared to be sent into this world, but to not be of this world. This is evident in our growing commitment to our parish as we continue to build relationships through our newly developed house system with spiritual directors of each house coming from our priests, our youth ministers, and family faith formation. Our house system is meant to build community and create unity while our students study the lives of saints and try to emulate virtues and actions that made them saintly. We now attend adoration on a monthly basis, mass weekly, reconciliation multiple times a year, retreats and bonding days with youth ministry throughout the year, a growing collaboration with family faith formation, prayer partners across grade levels, instituted prayer journals and scripture in each class, with the support of the Knights Columbus this year, placed statues of Our Lady in each classroom, a growing faculty Bible study group, weekly prayer of the rosary, prayer circles, service learning projects, morality curriculum, daily religion classes, and this year we have added an additional religion teacher to focus on our early childhood program, prayer walls now in the hallways, and partnered with our parish trustee, Christy Tyne, to add Catholic resources in a blog for our parents. This year, our eighth grade students partnered with our brand new sister parish, Good Shepherd in Pendleton, to create a video highlighting the history of their parish for our diocese. And our students and families have raised over $20,000, supporting multiple organizations and families experiencing difficulties. This list could go on and on. This is the foundation we are building. To our students here now, I'm very proud and humbled to be your principal. You here now at Mass are dedicated to our parish, our school, and most importantly, Christ. You are our future leaders. Thank you, and please know each one of you will receive an extra 10 points to your houses for your dedication and being here today. Please let your teachers know tomorrow if you are here at Mass. And to the families here that brought them, thank you. Thank you for waking up this morning and choosing to bring your children here and participate as a family at Mass. Thank you for your commitment to our school and our parish. And to all families here contemplating sending your children to our school, we are not perfect. I am far from being a perfect leader and principal and very undeserving to be standing here. But 600,000 minutes of your child's life will be sent in an academic setting. 600,000 minutes before they turn the age of 14. What messages will be sent to them? What messages do you want them to receive? What will be the foundation their lives are built upon? Will they be messages of faith, hope, and love? Join us. Join our school community, our school family, and work with us on a much larger mission as we work to rebuild Catholic education on the foundation of Christ's words, love, and sacraments. On behalf of Father Leon, Father Dan, Father Joe, our school board, and our faculty, we now invite you all over to come to the school. Come walk over, meet our, tour, meet our staff, tour our school, join us for conversations, and most importantly, join us for refreshments. As Roe and our wonderful hospitality committee have a nice spread in the cafeteria for you. 
Thank you again for your time and your commitment to our school and our students. And God bless. So I don't get in trouble with the pastor, we have a couple parish announcements. Um, St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry supplies are low, so please help them out with their heart-to-heart -heart food drive. This Thursday is the Feast of the Presentation, also known as Candlemas, so we'll have candles in the church that are available for a donation. Our, we will be doing the St. Play's throat, Blessing of Throats uh, on Friday, as well as after the all weekend masses, if you were unable to attend mass on Friday. And again, we invite you to please come over to our school for the open house. And we also, our school is having, it's the Homeschool Association is having this meat raffle this coming Friday. I'm very excited about that event. It's a wonderful event, so we please invite you to come. More information can be found on our website and in the bulletin. And we'll certainly want to recognize all of our school students who have been involved in the celebration as well. Our altar servers, our choir, our lectors, our gift bearers, and all of our ushers are all students of St. Gregory the Great School. So thank you for your service here today. And I'd also like to ask our alumni of the school to please stand. At, <laughs> please stand. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Prayer for renewal. In every age, O God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. At this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.